In the last few le lectures, we discussed about the LC and the RC oscillators. The main limitation of this oscillator is that when they are operated, it will warm up. Consequently, the values of the resistances and the inductances which are the frequency determining factors in these circuits will change with temperature. So this causes the change in frequency of the oscillator. That means the frequency of the LC and the RC oscillators are unstable. So that is one of the main disadvantage or limitation of these LC and RC oscillators. That is the frequency is unstable because of the variations in the parameters of the tank circuit or the oscillatory circuit due to the temperature dependence. Another thing is that if one of the component in the feedback network is changed it will shift the operating frequency of the oscillator. So the operating frequency we know that it depends on the parameters or components in the feedback circuit or the tank circuit. So when the components are changed, it will change the operating frequency. So these are the main two limitations of an LC and RC oscillators. To overcome this, that is to have a stable frequency output from an oscillator, a new type of oscillators has been introduced. They are called uh, crystal oscillators. So in this lecture, we will discuss about the crystal oscillator. You know the piezoelectric effect that means when an AC signal is applied to the certain crystals like uh, quartz, Rochelle salt, tourmaline etc. they produce vibrations or they start to vibrate when an AC signal is applied or conversely when they are compressed or when they are undergoing the mechanical stress or pressure they will produce oscillations or AC signal so that, such, uh, that effect is called the piezoelectric effect and uh, such crystals are called uh, piezoelectric crystals. So the importance of piezoelectric crystals are that when we apply an AC voltage across them, they vibrate at the frequency of the applied voltage. Or conversely, when they are compressed or placed under mechanical strain to vibrate, then they produce an AC voltage. So this property of this crystal has been used to create or make the crystal oscillators. So before uh, discussing the crystal oscillator, let's discuss about these piezoelectric crystals. Of this different crystals they are mentioned above that is quartz crystal, Rochelle salt, Rochelle salt and tourmaline. The quartz is the most commonly used one because of its moderate piezoelectric effect and uh, the strength which you can withstand the stresses. After these three, 
Rochelle salt is the one showing the most piezoelectric effect. But it mechanically weak, it cannot be used for making the crystal oscillators. Also, tourmaline having high mechanical strength out of these three, but its piezoelectric effect is least. So the quartz is having the piezoelectric effect in between the Rochelle salt and tourmaline and also its strength is also mechanical strength is also in between these two values these two uh, crystals another important thing is that quartz is quartz crystals are inexpensive and are readily available in nature due to these two reasons that is it's a uh, Available, uh, availability in the nature and inexpensive and uh, its properties the piezoelectric effect and uh, the mechanical strength is moderate these quartz crystals are commonly used in making crystal oscillators So usually for practical purposes or connecting in electronic circuits, a piezoelectric crystal is placed in between two metal plates. That is if you consider this as a crystal, this is placed in between two metal plates to connect it in electronic circuits. So, Actually, it behaves like a capacitor because when a cap two plates are separated by a small distance, it will act as a capacitor. And uh, this quartz crystal or the piezoelectric crystal will act like a dielectric. So, a piezoelectric crystal usually connected in a an electronic circuit by placing it between the two metal plates that means it is having a capacitance or a, it will behaves like a capacitor with a, a dielectric placed in between the two plates and this dielectric is the piezoelectric crystal Now if we consider the equivalent circuit of a crystal before applying any stresses or the crystal is not vibrating it will be exactly like a capacitor with a dielectric placed in between them so we can call it as CEM it is having a capacitance CEM where M is due to the mounting because a crystal is mounted in a circuit by two electrodes so it will act as a capacitor so when a piezoelectric crystal is not vibrating it can be replaced by a capacitor of capacitance CM which is called the mounting capacitor Now, when the capacitor is vibrating, then a vibrator will have two, three mechanical properties. One is its crystal mass, another is its elasticity and uh, another is the mechanical friction so the electrical analog of these three quantities the crystal mass is the inductance inductance l the elasticity is the capacitance the electrical analog or electrical 
equivalent of this elasticity is the capacitance C and the mechanical friction. The electrical equivalent of the mechanical friction is the resistance R. So when a crystal or something is vibrating, the three parameters which we have to consider is its uh, mass, its elasticity and mechanical friction. The three electrical equivalent of these quantities are the inductance L, the capacitance C and the resistance R respectively. So if you replace a crystal means a piezoelectric crystal with an equivalent electrical circuit when it is vibrating it is having a mounting capacitance cm and the electrical different uh, electrical equivalent of the mechanical properties are L C and R so this is L C and R so this is the equivalent circuit of a piezoelectric crystal when it is vibrating. Here remember that this Cm is the mounting capacitance and the RLC are the electrical equivalent of the vibrational characteristics of the crystal. And from, the, from this one, we can define the quality factor of the crystal as 1 by R into root L by C. That means when a crystal is vibrating, it can be replaced by a mounting capacitor CM connected with a, a series LCR circuit. Now, if we consider this circuit the equivalent circuit of this piezoelectric crystal at if we plot the impedance versus the frequency of the crystal that is it is the impedance of the circuit or equivalent circuit of a crystal and the frequency of the some signal applied to this uh, circuit initially by means at low frequencies you know that the reactance of the capacitor is very high because of the property x c is equal to 1 by c omega omega is 2 pi f so 1 by 2 pi f c so at low frequencies the capacitive reactance of cm and uh, c that is XCM and XC are very high so the reactance will be very high so as the frequency increases the reactance decreases and uh, impedance of this circuit will start to decrease and at a particular point when the inductive reactance XL is equal to XC, the capacitive reactance of the circuit, then if resonance occurs, that is 2 
pi L omega will be equal to 1 by 2 pi F C. Here one thing I have assumed that usually the value of C M is very much greater than the value of C. So at low frequencies this C M will offer very high reactance. So the reactance of this series LCR circuit will be very small. So we have to consider only this series LCR part of this circuit at low frequencies and the reactance is decreasing when the frequency is increased. Usually this CM will have for a 4 megahertz crystal this CM will have almost values 5 picofarad and uh, this C will have capacitance of 0 0.015 picofarad. So if you compare these two and the reactants offered by the crystal or uh, the capacitance is CM and C, you can see that uh, this part the series LCR path will offer low reactance when compared to the reactance of the CM alone. So at very low frequencies we have to consider this series LCR part and uh, when we increase the frequency the reactance of the capacitance reaches a value equal to the reactance offered by the inductor that is called uh, the inductive reactance is equal to capacitive reactance or the resonance occurs for this series LCR part at that time here I have made a mistake it is 2 pi L F is equal to 1 by 2 pi F C from this we will get a if resonant frequency as yf is equal to 1 by 2 pi root lc so it uh, as frequency increases the occurs the resonance then when we increase the frequency further the uh, uh, impedance of the circuit increases so at this point we will have low reactance uh, it is due to the Resonance occurs in the series LCR circuit. We can call it as the frequency corresponding to the series LCR resonance. So it is FS. Now, when the uh, frequency increases beyond a the value, then the reactance offered by this capacitor, that is CM and C in parallel will become equal to the inductive reactance of the L that means the parallel LCR circuit will occur there or there is a uh, possibility or there is there occurs a parallel resonance when we increase the frequency again and we will reach a resonance condition such that the reactance is very high then further increase of the frequency will decrease the impedance of the circuit so we will get a graph like this initially when we increase the frequency the impedance is decreases and uh, this series LCR part will offer lower reactance or lower impedance to the circuit or impedance of the circuit such that uh, there occurs a series resonance condition and that frequency is given by Fs is equal to 1 by 2 pi root LC. Now if we further increase the frequency of frequency then the reactance offered by the mounting capacitor will become equal to the reactance of this series LCR circuit that means these two are in parallel it is this part and uh, this part are in parallel so there occurs another resonance condition such that XL is equal to XCM in that case the frequency of oscillation is given by F parallel 
or the resonance in the parallel circuit is given by 1 by 2 pi root L C T where C T is equal to the ca total capacitance which is the par uh, series combination of uh, C M and C so it is C M into C so C M into C divided by C M plus C is the total so here in a circuit of uh, piezoelectric crystal we can have two resonances one is the series resonance that is the resonance in the series LCR circuit of the crystal and that frequency is given by Fs is equal to 1 by 2 pi root LC where L and C are the mechanical electrical analog of the mechanical properties of the crystal and uh, another resonance occurs which is called the parallel resonance which is given by FP which is equal to 1 by 2 pi root LCT where CT is the total capacitance of the mechanical sorry electrical analog of the mechanical capacitance C into the mounting capacitance CM so it is C total is equal to C into CM divided by C plus CM so we can conclude here is that in a crystal which shows the piezoelectric effect will have two types of resonances the series resonance and a parallel resonance so usually we will use this parallel resonance to have the or to make the crystal oscillator so now let's consider a crystal oscillator the circuit of a crystal oscillator actually contains an amplifier circuit that is a transistor with a proper biasing um, considering a voltage divider biasing that is it is constituted by two resistances R1 R2 and uh, another resistance RE forms the stabilization so R1 R2 and RE forms the stabilization and the biasing circuit Here it is grounded. And uh, in the collector, we will connect a radio frequency chalk coil to offer low reactance path to the DC and uh, to offer high reactance or impedance to the AC. And across the RE we will use the emitter bypass capacitor CE and across R2 we will use a capacitor C to bypass the AC voltage dropping across R2. Now Here we will connect plus VCC. Now the crystal oscillatory circuit is exactly resembles to that of a 
culpit oscillator with the inductor coil is replaced by the crystal or the piezoelectric crystal that is it actually contains a capacitance C1 and C2 connected in series and they form a voltage divider setup this is C1 so the output voltage appears across C1 and uh, the feedback voltage appears across the capacitance C2 and uh, parallel to this one in the culpit oscillator we will have a an inductor but the, in the case of a crystal oscillator this inductance is replaced by a piezoelectric crystal and across here we will connect the see the coupling capacitor to take the output so it is the coupling capacitor CC so this forms a crystal circuit diagram of a crystal oscillator here you know that uh, this is a transistor BC107 This R1, R2 and RE form the biasing and stabilization network. RF, the radio frequency chalk is used instead of a collector resistance. And uh, to bypass capacitors, CE and uh, C are used to bypass the voltages across the emitter resistances and uh, across R2 respectively and uh, two capacitances C1, C2 forms a voltage divider biasing they forms the uh, part of the oscillatory and the feedback circuit and uh, this circuit uh, 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 parallel to this C1, C2 voltage divider arrangement of the capacitances, we are used a crystal oscillator and is connected in parallel. So, this crystal oscillator will oscillate, will produce AC signals of the frequency given by F is equal to 1 by 2 pi F sorry root LCT it usually ranges from 25 kilohertz to 5 megahertz but for a particular crystal it will produce a particular frequency only using a quartz crystal we can produce the frequency of oscillations ranges from 25 kilohertz to 5 megahertz. So here this value actually depends on the value of uh, L and CT that are the properties of this uh, crystal and it actually depends upon the how the crystal is cut. All the piezoelectric crystals uh, depends uh, the frequency of all the piezoelectric crystals will depend upon how the cut is made and I am not going to the details of those things here just a piezoelectric crystal if we are having suppose a quartz crystal it will have a particular frequency resonant frequency and uh, it is already determined by using this expression it actually ranges between these two values to 25 kilohertz to 5 megahertz so that crystal is connected here say this crystal produces a frequency of 4 megahertz here 
then the voltage across the capacitance c1 produces oscillations across this uh, uh, crystal and it produces a uh, frequency of 4 megahertz and the voltage across this c1 will be in this way here it is positive and here it is negative now this c2 the voltage across c2 will be plus uh, minus and plus like this so that means the voltage given to the base or the base emitter junction is in phase with the input voltage appearing across the base emitter junction because 180 degree phase difference is produced by the amplifier action sorry the transistor amplifier the transistor in the amplifier circuit and a further 180 degree is produced by the c1 c2 voltage divider arrangement which we have mentioned in the case of a culpit oscillator so we can say that uh, there is a positive feedback in the circuit and the crystal oscillator oscillates at a fixed frequency so this is the working of a crystal oscillator the main advantages of a crystal oscillator is that uh, already mentioned that it uh, always have a fixed frequency so we can say that uh, frequency stability is uh, one of the main advantage of using a crystal oscillator also the quality factor of this lc oscillator is given by the expression 1 by r root l by c uh, usually this r will be approximately 100 ohms and uh, l will be around 100 milli henry and the uh, c will be of the order of 0.15 picofarads so if we substitute these values here this is for a crystal of uh, producing 4 megahertz frequency it will come around 26000 so usually all the the quality factor of all the crystal oscillators are greater than 10000 but for a lc oscillator it is quality factor is around 100 so these are the two important advantages of using a, a crystal oscillator one is the frequency is frequency stability is very high the quality factor is also very high the disadvantage is that uh, it produces a particular frequency only we cannot vary the frequency of oscillation by changing any circuit parameter we cannot change the frequency of oscillation so that is an, another disadvantage that is in some circuit if we want to change the frequency of oscillation like in a function generator in function generator we want to change the frequency of oscillation of uh, as we desire but it is not possible by using a crystal oscillator we have to replace the crystal to have a different frequency of oscillation so the frequency of oscillation cannot be varied so it cannot be used for oscillators for the purpose having the variation in frequencies or if you want to vary the frequency of an oscillator we cannot use the crystal oscillator for that purpose but these crystal oscillators are used in the transmission and receiving system of uh, communications that is uh, the radio frequency oscillators especially in broadcasting system a broadcasting communication is made possible by using the 
crystal oscillators where we need to have a frequency stability less than 0.01 percentage and all those things so we should have the frequency should not vary greater than 0.001 percentage that is achieved only by using a crystal oscillator that is in the broadcasting systems and also in the transmission and receiving part of a communication system we need uh, to have a fixed frequency where we will use the crystal oscillators another disadvantage of uh, this uh, crystal oscillator is that they cannot be used in low power sorry they cannot be used in high power circuits they cannot be used only in the used only in the low power circuits so these are the disadvantages of uh, crystal oscillators thank you